Dear students, let us start back with the alignment design and within the alignment design we have been discussing about the super elevation design and the previous interaction we have looked at that how it is going to be provided, what are the various steps in which this needs to be taken care of and in the extreme conditions if the things have not been satisfied by the value of E and F that is the rate of super elevation and the coefficient of lateral friction then we have to restrict the speed and that restriction has to be defined and informed to the driver also. Now, once we have got the value of E which can be 7 percent, 10 percent, 4 percent, 5 percent or even less than the maximum values which otherwise can be there in any of the given condition of the road. How we are going to implement that in the field is another aspect which needs to be taken care of and we have to discuss about it. So, in today's discussion we are going to first of all talk about the attainment of the super elevation and then we will move to the next element which is usually provided on a circular curve and is known as extra widening. So, we will see that what is extra widening and how or what particular value of extra widening needs to be provided on a circular curve. So, let us start with the attainment of the super elevation. Now, the super elevation is attained in two steps which have been mentioned here as a step 1 and a step 2. So, first of all let us understand that what we are trying to do. We are on a straight section like this and then there is a circular curve which is being provided in this form. So, we are going to move on this particular circular curve and therefore, a super elevation has to be provided. Now, when you are on this section then in this particular section it is going to be a profile like this. But as we move to the super elevated condition on a circular curve then this is be a condition which will be there. So, we have this type of a super elevation being provided. So, we are moving from a normal section which is a cambered section. So, this is a cambered section and this is a super elevated section. So, this is a type of a movement we are trying to do. So, when we have this cambered section and we are going into a further super elevated it means what you see is that with respect to the center line in the cambered section the slopes are going in the opposite directions and if we consider one as a positive slope then another slope is a negative slope. But when we look at the super elevated section then the slope is continuous one across the width of the carriageway and is a positive value. So, so as to achieve this particular condition or this type of a profile these two steps are necessary. The first step is the elimination of the reverse camber on outer side and attaining camber across the carriageway. So, we are talking about a situation that this is a camber c percent and this is a camber c percent. So, in this case we are saying the reverse camber has to be removed say if our curve is like this. So, this is outer side and this is inner side. So, what we have is that the reverse camber is on this side. So, we assume this is negative and this is positive. So, on the outer side the reverse camber is being eliminated is that one condition can be that we have plus c percent here and this is 0 that means the reverse camber has been removed here. And another condition will be that with respect to the center line now we have c percent here and c percent is here. So, there is a continuous change in the profile of the outer side and we are trying to bring into a situation where the whole value is nothing but c percent. Now, once this c percent has been attained then the next thing which we are talking as a step 2 is attaining the first super elevation across the carriageway. That means, now when we are talking about this here what we are looking at is not this particular section which is a c percent rather what we are talking is a section which is with e percent where e is greater than c percent and that is the way the total profile has changed. So, we are going to talk about these things one by one in successive slides. So, as a first step 
let us see that how we are going to illuminate the crown and this crown is at the center of the carriageway. So, this is the total carriageway which we are talking here and we have c percent of camber here and c percent of the camber here if we assume this as positive. So, we are saying this is negative. Now, there are two methods of doing so. So, we have method 1 and method 2. What is method 1? Method 1 is that we are raising the outer edge with respect to the center line. So, we are going in this direction, we are slowly and slowly increasing the height of the outer edge. So, this is my outer edge and this is inner edge. So, we are increasing it like this. The another case is that with respect to the center line is here, but we are shifting the crown outwards. And again the condition remains the same that we had c percent as a camber, but now as we shift here the finally we are going to get a surface which is with a c percent here as well as a c percent here. Now, what are the positives or negatives of these two particular methods? If you can make it out, now these two methods can be compared on a count of drainage as well as on a count of a steering of vehicle or the comfort with which the vehicle can be moved. So, these are the two things basically you need to look at on these particular two methods. And if you try to see this and say if I am talking about a condition like I have a vehicle here which has the location at this one. So, what is going to happen here with respect to the riding with respect to the steering of the vehicles in two of the methods is what you are trying to look at. So, probably you can very easily make it out that what are the problems which are going to be there. Now, when we say drainage, then there is a minimum gradient which is required to drain the water. And when in a given condition set of situations that the rainfall intensity is so x value and the type of the pavement is uh, of some uh, material P and all those things, we have already decided that we should provide a value of C. And this value of C is going to help us in the draining of water as fast as possible and making the surface dry. So, if this is already being decided, then it means if you are going to a value lower than C and if you are going to a further minimum absolute minimum going below that, then this is going to create a drainage problem. So, if you are looking at this situation, then what we found is that we have to work with the one of these two particular methods. Now, the things have been defined here further. It says that in the method 1, we are rotating the outer portion with respect to the center line to bring it to the level of the center line of the carriageway. So, when we say to bring it to the level of the center line of the carriageway, that means if this has been the situation with the c percent of the camber, we have raised it here and we have brought it to this level. So, this is how the level here and the level here they are same, but in this case the gradient here in the outer side is 0. So, this is one thing which we are looking at and when this is being done then the distance required to eliminate the reverse camber on the outer side and so as to bring it to 0 that particular distance is known as tangent runoff distance. And why the name tangent runoff distance is because this is being done on a straight profile. So, we are not on any of the curve, we are not on a circular curve, we are not even on a say uh, there can be another type of curve which is defined as a transition curve we, which we, we talked about when we looked at the elements or the properties of a circular curve. So, whatever we are doing this one is on a straight profile. So, we have a straight profile and then the curve is going to be there. It means we started at this location at this form and then we are reaching a certain condition like this. 
So, this is the distance which is moved here d is being defined as the tangent runoff distance and then it is going to be further rotated and when it is being further rotated then what we are going to get is a c percent throughout and we have a positive camber all across the width of the carriageway. But then this particular thing is going to happen on a distance d1 and this distance d1 is a part of another type of a distance which is defined as super elevation runoff distance. And this super elevation runoff distance this is related with transition curve usually. Okay, so, this is how we are going to work in this particular method 1, but then we started discussing about the merits and demerits of the two ways in which this type of a situation can be done or the, uh, the crown can be eliminated. So, if you are looking at that then what are the uh, disadvantages or things which are going to be there in this particular case. So, as I said that very first thing is there is going to be a certain area and in this certain area the gradient is going to be less than the minimum gradient which is otherwise required to drain off the water and therefore, there is a possibility of pounding of water in some small stretch and we have to take care of it and we have to see that this water goes out of the surface as soon as possible. So, we need to make some arrangement for it. But as far as the movement of vehicle is concerned, the movement of vehicle if we look at here, so this is going to be in this form or this is going to be in this form. So, there is going to be some tilting, but then still the vehicle will be able to very easily negotiate this type of a a stretch where we are raising the outer edge and we are trying to bring it from minus c percent to plus c percent. But if you look at in this case then what happens is that if you have a vehicle here and this wheel is touching the surface on this side, but on the other side it will be in air and therefore, there is going to be a possibility of toppling of this particular vehicle if they try to negotiate in this form and therefore, every time this vehicle will always try to remain towards the inner side rather than going towards the outer side. So, that they can steer the vehicle in a safe condition smoothly and comfortably. So, that is the reason that usually method 1 is being adopted so as to eliminate the crown and then bring the whole of the surface of the carriageway, the width of the carriageway to a level of c percent. Now, another thing which it says is the outer edge is raised to 0 cross slope on the straight section of the road and up to the start of the transition curve. So, if the transition curve has been provided by the start of the transition curve what we have it as I said that the profile is like this, then the profile became in this form and then the profile became c and then the profile is going to become E. So, this is how the profiles are changing. So, in that direction if this was on a straight section and the straight section is continuously going on up to this point and from here we are on transition and the transition is going up to this point. So, this distance was defined as D and this was defined as D1 so, and that D was a tangent runoff and D1 was a super elevation runoff and that is what is being talked here. Okay, so, when we are trying to look at these particular things, whatever the merits and demerits which I have talked by way of showing them in those particular diagrams have been now listed here. So, when we are rotating the outer edge so as to bring it to the level of uh, 0 percent and C and when we are shifting the crown outwards what is happening. So, the same thing as I told the cross slope in the outer part will be less than the required for drainage in a small section thus causing the water ponding. So, this is uh, one aspect we already talked about and it needs to be taken care of, but the vehicles will always be able to negotiate across the width of the carriageway. So, there is no issue of concentration of vehicles in some width of the carriageway they are going to remain across the width of the carriageway because those type of uh, problems are not going to be there. But when you look at the shifting crown outwards, so what it says is that there is not going to be any problem of the drainage of course, because what you have is something like this, whereas the center line is somewhere here, you have been shifting your crown towards the outer side. So, this becomes quite steep 
and when this becomes quite steep then the drainage of water is going to be quite faster in this one. So, there is no issue of a drainage of water in this case. But the problem is basically with the movement of the vehicles and the vehicles will not be able to traverse along the outer section of the carriageway due to these steep profiles. So, that is the reason why usually this rotating outer edge so as to get the zero slope of the outer side or eliminate the crown is being considered. Now, let us look at the step 2. Now, step 2 is what? Step 2 is rotating the pavement to attain super elevation. So, so far what we attained was C percent. Now, we want to attain E percent. So, in terms of the total rays, if we say this was capital C, now what we are interested to get is a capital E and this is nothing but a small c into the width of the carriageway or this is nothing but e into the width of the carriageway. So, that is the difference which is going to be there. So, if you are talking about this as 2 percent or this as 7 percent, you can understand that how the values are going to be different. Now, so as to do this rotation of the pavement because you have got a pavement with respect to the center line where all across the width of the carriageway what you have is the C percent. So, we are going to get E and for that we need to see that how we can do that and that is where there are three cases of doing it 1, 2 and 3. The first one is rotating about the center line of the pavement being shown here. So, we have this as a center line this is the width of the carriageway. So, what we have done is we have rotated about the center line it means this goes up and this goes down and when we are doing this we have to go up and down and we have to provide the total value of E which is small e into w. So, it means the half of the value is going to be provided on inner side and half of the value is going to be provided on the outer side. So, whatever the sides are there they are going to be rotated equally. When we look at the another case the another case is rotating about the inner edge. So, my inner edge is this one, this is inner edge and I am rotating the whole of the thing about the inner edge. So, my pivot point is here. So, when my pivot point is here, so initially I had C percent and I am going to make it E percent. So, the total value of E is going to be provided on one side with respect to the another edge and this is how the rotation is going to be there. And the third case is that we are rotating about the outer edge. So, my outer edge is here. So, this is outer edge. So, my pivot point is at this one and I am rotating it with respect to that outer edge. So, as to again attain a value that is E. So, what are the changes which are going to be there when you are trying to do any of these rotations is another question which we need to see. You can again try by yourself that uh, what things can be talked about. So, the things which can be talked about is very first thing the profile or levels of center point, inner edge or outer edge. So, how these are going to change. Another thing is the requirement of the earthwork whether we are going into a cutting we are going into a filling or whether we are going in both of those things. And the third thing is because whatever you do as a movement or rotation of a pavement the drainage is probably going to have affected at a location and that is where we have to take care of that also. So, that means if you talk about these of the three elements and you try to superimpose them on these three methods, then you will get the replies that what exactly is happening in which of the method. And these merits and demerits are now being talked here. So, very first one is when you are rotating about the center line as you have seen. So, when you rotate it about the center line, then with respect to the initial condition what you get is that you are going in this direction up and in this direction down. So, what happens is the profile of the center line this is being maintained there is no change in the profile of the center line, but the profile of the inner edge and the profile of the outer edge is going to change. So, this is one point. The second point was the earthwork. 
So, what we found is that there is a cutting here, whereas there is a filling on the other side, but because this is w by 2 and this is also w by 2, it means half of the portion is being cut and half of the portion is being filled. Therefore, there is a balancing of the earthwork. So, earthwork is balanced and the third point is a drainage point. So, for drainage point what is happening? So, that you try to make it out. I will come back to that just once we complete P and C. Now, in the case of outer edge when you are rotating about the outer edge. So, what is happening is that this is the outer edge and the rotation is like this. So, there has been a change in this form whereas, this is the center line. So, very first thing is the center line profile has shifted from this level to this level it has gone down. Second thing is that because the outer level has been maintained as such it provides a better appearance and the visibility to the drivers because on the curve they always try to remain towards the outer side okay, and then they try to maintain a more of the clearances between the vehicles and if there is a problem then only they are going to be towards the center of it. So, that is there. So, the profile of the center line has changed, but the profile of the outer edge has not changed. The profile of the inner edge has also changed. Now, because you are going down in this form, so therefore, there is going to be a lot of cutting here. So, you may require the material to fill in in this one. So, some material has to be either borrowed from the side locations or to be transported. And the third element again is the drainage and the drainage is going to be a problem in this case. As I said, I am going to talk about the first one afterwards. So, so you, what you can see here is because th this inner edge has gone down. So, this is going into a deep cut form. So, there is a possibility of a drainage problem here. So, it may cause a problem of drainage on the inner side if it is not being taken care of. So, there is a lot of cutting in this case, but when you talk about the movement about the inner edge. So, what happens is that you are going up and therefore, this is the inner edge and you are going in this form with respect to the outer edge. So, what happens is again the profile of the center line is going to shift from this point to this point. So, we are going up the profile of the inner edge is not changing and the profile of the outer edge is changing and at the same time there is a total filling which is going to be there. So, you again need a material which may be from any of the location and in this case because the inner edge profile has not changed that there is not going to be a problem of drainage in this case. So, come back to the first one which was about the center line and we said the drainage is what issue. So, in this particular case you can try to make it out that initially the pavement was like this, but here the inner edge has gone down. So, there is going to be a problem of a ponding of a water in a very small section and that needs to be taken care of by way of how the sides of the carriageway have been graded have been maintained. Now, after elimination of the crown, the pavement is rotated as per the method as we have talked, but this is done as per the requirement of the area till full super elevation is attained. The distance it needs to attain full super elevation after reverse camber is made 0 is defined as super elevation runoff distance. We discussed about it with the diagrams also previously and this has to be attained on the full length of the transition curve. So, you have a straight then a transition curve and then a circular curve. So, this is how. So, this is circular curve, this is transition curve and this is an straight section. So, by the time of this one we have attained the total super elevation. So, my section has become like this E percent which is started with C percent here and the section remains super elevated at the start of the circular curve and it remains so up to the end. So, whatever the direction we are moving you can talk about the same from any of those directions. Now, one another case is that there is a straight and then there is a circular curve. So, this is a circular curve and this is a straight section. No transition curve has been provided. Now, in such cases then how we are going to provide this or how going we are going to attain the super elevation is what being discussed here. What it says is that in such cases before the circular curve the two third of the super elevation is to be attained on the tangent section. That means, 
by this time we have rotated our pavement in such a manner that it is E 1 and E 1 is 2 third of E which is to be provided. So, this much has been done on the straight section itself and then one third is going to be obviously attained by this. So, you got here E. So, this is how the things will happen. So, there is some distance which is being left here on the circular curve on either side where the change is from E 1 to E where E 1 is 2 by 3 of E. Now, the long it when you are doing all of those things whether it is a case of with a straight transition curve and circular curve or it is a any other thing the longitudinal slope at which this transformation is being done that has to be taken care of and how we take care of this is it is in the form of the way the introduction is being done and this introduction is done in terms of 1 in 150 not steeper than that. That means, it is a maximum value which is going to be there in a plain and rolling terrain. So, as we are going forward from this straight section towards the curve, we are raising the edges at this rate of 1 in 150. Okay, this is a maximum, it can be 1 in 200, it can be 1 in 250 also. So, as, as a flat as possible, as easier as possible is what we are talking. But if you are talking in the main mountainous and steep terrain, then in the mountainous and steep terrain, this is being kept as 1 in 60 and that is again a maximum value. So, it can be more than this particular one as a flatter condition like 1 in 100. So, it is fine. So, we can do that. So, this is the rate which is going to be utilized so as to arrive on this. So, when we say this and we are going to talk about E, we said that it is E into W C. Now, when we are talking about this rate, one another thing comes that is N. So, this E is going to be achieved at a rate of n over the width of w c and that is why it is going to give you value of e. So, if it is 7 percent, so e is 0.07, if it is a two lane road, it is w c is 7 meters and n if it is a plane and rolling terrain and we are taking maximum as 150, so n is going to be 150. So, it is 0.07 into 7.0 into 150 is what is the total e which is going to be provided as of now and we are going to see that how this changes further when we discuss about the other elements too. Now, one another thing which may happen when we are talking about say any of the type of a terrain that there is a possibility of a cross drainage works which comes and this is going to be quite more when you are in a hilly terrain. So, when we are in a hilly terrain and this cross drainage works are there then what it says is that if it is falling on the horizontal curve then the deck of the cross drainage work C D W it shall be super elevated in the similar manner as being done. So, this is uh, uh, how we are going to achieve or we are going to provide the super elevated profile before the circular curve or on the circular curve depending if the transition curve is being provided or it is not being provided. So, that is how we can do this type of an attainment. Now, here what we can see is those particular levels as you can see that uh, we are starting with the straight tangent section. So, when we are starting with the tangent section then this is the center line and we have c percent and c percent. Then there is a tangent runoff distance we start raising the outer edge and it has been brought to 0 percent and it has been brought to c percent here. Then after some time it becomes totally c percent and then finally, it becomes e percent. So, from when we are changing from the reverse camber to the 0, then this is defined as a tangent runoff distance and this is going to be attained at a rate of 1 in n, where n can be 150 or 60 as maximum depending on the terrain which we talked in the previous slide. And when we are going ahead in this case, then what we have is that here as we are going into the attainment of the total E, this is defined as a super elevation runoff distance and this is being provided on a transition curve section and you will have the circular curve section from this point onward. So, when you are doing this then what you found is that how the profiles are changing in this particular case. Say the profiles which we are talking if we are saying that it is rotating about center line. So, this is my center line and therefore, this level is going to remain the same. There is no change in level. 
but when you are here up to this point at this point the inner edge and outer edge they are at the same level. So, therefore, they are coming here. Now, we started raising the outer edge and this outer edge the level of center line and the outer edge comes at the same one. So, this comes here whereas, the inner edge remains at the whatever the level was there. Then continuously we have raised it and we have come to C. So, what happens is so this is C by 2 and this is C by 2. So, we have got to these levels and then we started rotating the pavement and when we started rotating the pavement with respect to the center it is E by 2 on this and it is E by 2 on this one. So, this is how the profiles are going to change and we can draw these profiles. So, this is what you can try to see and this is being given for all the cases. So, we have a about the center line, we have about the inner edge and we have about the outer edge. Now, what I do is I am going to leave it to you and to see that how the profiles are changing when you have different type of methods of rotation and if there is an issue then you can always come back and can write to me that how this is happening or wherever the doubt is there you can talk about that particular doubt and we can resolve it. So, with this we stop our interaction here and we will be continuing with the rest of the elements which needs to be provided on a horizontal circular curve in the next interaction. Till then bye and thank you.